comments, anything like that. I'm going to read them at the end of the live. Because um, I just don't want to distract in the story. Damn, I thought I had a uh, Discord on here. So I could let them know we in the building. But anyway, we're going straight in. Around the time of the virus, bro. Around the time of the virus was one of my most profitable moments inside the facility, as well as one of my worst moments inside the facility. What up, though, Alan? The reason I say that is because inside the facility, bro, um, though it poke hell, nah. Um, inside the facility, when the virus came about, it was a lot of people that had stopped dropping, right? And when I say stop dropping, y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that pack. A lot of people stopped dropping it. Um, a lot of people was getting sick. A lot of people was, you know, it was just like they scared to come on in with it. So it narrowed things down for the people that the people that was still willing to drop during the virus. They was making way more money than they was already making before. Is it lagging for anybody else? I don't know why it keep doing that. Is it lagging or skipping or anything like that? I had put a, ad, a physical address, but I'll drop an email for it. I'm going to make one when I get off of this. So that was a time where for people who had stuff to sell, it was amazing for them, bro. And you know, it was terrible for some. Like around this time, you really had to have you some money. Because if you didn't, like I say, bro, it's, it's a lot of issues um, with getting it in or a person might drop and then they might wait a long ass time before they do it again. Because when that came, when that virus came around in the prison, they say they tightened up on the security for whatever reason. So, um, big shout out to Grambling, Louisiana, 318. They new to the membership. Y'all welcome them. So, thanks for the support, fam. So... They had us on what you call a modified lockdown. Modified lockdowns just means you cannot leave. Um, you, I'm going to read all the comments when I'm done. You cannot read. I mean, you cannot leave out of your dorm. The only people that was letting leave out and go to work was the people that worked in the kitchen. The kitchen orderlies because they got to cook the food. They got to deal with the food. They got to bring it down to the dorms and all that type of stuff. So one day, something devastating happened. Well, something devastating happened back to back. The first devastation was the person who was bringing me my pack, she, um, she had a lot of things going on in her life, and uh, she just was not able. She was actually out of work for about two months. Um, she had to stay home. I don't really want to go into detail on what she had going on, but she had, she had a little something something going on where she wasn't coming to work for a couple of months that killed me because now i'm forced to shop with somebody on this compound or to try and finesse somebody to bring me something and it's like bro it's the worst time to do it everybody who's doing it damn near is already locked in with somebody else you know what i'm saying and the people that i can shop with here is gonna try to charge me an arm and a leg <laughs> So there's a dude in the in the dorm directly next door to us, and his motion never stopped. Like, I think me, it probably was me and him was the last man st standing. His motion never stopped. Even when mine slowed up and stopped, his didn't stop. Um, hold on, yeah. His motion never stopped. Even when mine slowed up and stopped, can y'all see me still? Y'all can see me and hear me? Because I had to just go to another page real quick. Okay, cool. 
his motion never stopped, bro. It's a guy directly in the dorm next to us, and he had it going on. But what he did was he jacked the price up. That's the only thing. He jacked the price up. And I mean, you can't be mad at him because I slick had did the same thing, but I still made sure it was manageable for just the, the small hustlers. You know what I'm saying? His was kind of, but it but it seemed like it, it damn near, it was a couple dollars away from ridiculous, but it was still enough. Now they had this one orderly, well, they had like three or four orderlies at first that was serving food to the entire compound, right? They was giving food to the entire compound. These these three or four people. They was the only ones in the kitchen, bro. They working like slaves, bringing all this stuff down to the dorms. They got to deal with the whole, the regular uh, dorms, all that stuff. Three or four people. So they go around doing these tests. Like they, I think, how often was they doing it? Coming around testing us. I think like they do it every day. They damn near do it every day. They make everybody come to the door and like put this scan thing on our forehead. Ooh. Put this scan thing on our forehead, and they said that's how they test us to see, you know, what's your temperature, see who and who don't got the virus or whatever that, whatever the case is like that. So allegedly, talk heavy. What up, though? So allegedly, three out of the four kitchen workers all tested positive for the virus. So at this point, what happens is they put us on another <clears throat> modified lockdown. Now, what this modified lockdown does is it makes us lock down earlier than usual, which was at one point. Big Joe, what up, though? At one point was like one o'clock in the morning and it went from one o'clock in the morning to 1130. And then it went from 1130 to I think like. 11 or something. They just knocked off a couple minutes. But how it hurt everybody was this. People used to run up to them kitchen dudes whenever they come in the dorm, just bombarding them. You got to understand, there's only two, three, four of them coming in here at a time. It's 90 something people here. When I lost my motion, the dude next door is the only one having motion. So you got people from every single dorm running up to them, trying to get them food, trying to get them stuff, trying to make them go do this, trying to send them over there to him and then risk it coming back. Key, what up, though? All kind of stuff like that. Nikki, what up, though? So they like, shit, bro, like, bro, this is becoming too much. It's becoming too much of a hassle considering that the other three people got fired and there's only one other person. So guess what bro does? He makes a conscious decision to... Jack the price sky high up in the air. At this point, bro, something that you could have purchased before for $25, which is called uh, um, 25, 30 cc's of Chris Brown CDs, something that big that you would usually be able to get for $25, he won $100 for it. The Al Green CD. Now, the 25 sack of Al Green in the real world, it's probably about a, I say probably about, I don't even want to say a gram. I think it's about a 0.5. We'll just say a gram just to be on the safe side. A gram is about the price of $25 worth of Al Green in the prison. $100. I'm going to read all the comments and super chats when I get done. $100. Like he's not playing the game. He's not playing the video. And what it does when he jacks the price up like that, all them people that's bombarding and stressing out that one orderly, it knocks all of them out the box. Because everybody coming up to him with food, with snacks, two, three dollars, four dollars. Man, a lot of these folks ain't got no damn hundred dollars. And then a lot of people who do get money from their family, they can't just call and get no hundred dollars. They could probably get called and get 20 or something. So it knocked a lot of people out. So it took a lot of stress off the orderly as well as the dude next door that's... um. Servicing everybody, bro. I promise you, it got to a point where I bucked one day because I was so mad. Like, the man was trying to sell me a pack of, of, of uh, Chris Brown CDs, a cup of Al Green CDs, bro. Like, five, six hundred dollars. If I purchased this, 
There is no way possible I can profit a penny. The price is too high. So it puts you in a position where the only way you buy something is if you want to smoke. If you're the person that's just trying to kick back and smoke, you good. But if you're trying to hustle, you're not going to make no money. So I stopped buying it. But I was still smoking every day. You want to know how? I got a roommate named Old Rick. So me and Rick had been roommates for probably about two months. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, he wasn't always my roommate. The way Rick even moved into my room, um, Rick, Rick is a Forex trader. Um, that, like, got something to do with stocks or whatever. You got to sit there and watch the screen all day or whatever the case is. He's a Forex trader. And, bro, every day he used to bust out the room screaming early in the morning. He was a white guy. I just hit that motherfucker again. I just got $600. Oh, I got $300. Oh, I hit they ass for $1,100. He always do that. So, allegedly, he would be sleep all day and would be up all night trading on his phone on Forex. And then, you know, by the morning time, he see all of his profits. He'd pop out the room screaming. He'd be so excited. Well, make a long story short, Rick ended up um, being robbed for his phone, his food, um, his shoes, everything. About two, or bro, I believe about two or three times in the same dorm we're in. And I actually had a talk with him one day when he was coming to buy something from me. And I actually kind of told him, like, bro, you should stop doing that. Stop broadcasting it. Stop moving like this. Stop moving like that. But, you know, he just uses his trip like, you know. He ain't studying it or whatever. So one day he comes up to me and was like, hey, bro, can I move in the room with you? I'll pay you like three, four hundred to move in here. Three, four hundred? Shit. <laughs> well, I like the way that sound. I told my roommate instantly, hey, buddy, we, we about to make some arrangements. It got to be some furniture moving around this motherfucker. So he comes into the room. So now he's asking me about a phone. He's like, bro, you know, so I'm telling him about his previous situations, like, bro, listen, you know, you don't need to be in no situation where, you know, somebody trying to do something to you or whatever the case. <clears throat> so I made him an offer. Now, this offer may make me seem like some BS or whatever, but in my mind, it was a pretty good offer. And I was in survival mode. And considering what would be put on the line with it, I think it's a good offer. So I tell him, this is what I do for you, Rick. I want $1,200 for this phone, right? Yeah, he was, for sure. This this is my second roommate I had. I had another roommate in the hole. All he would do, he'd sleep all day, he'd wake up, get something to eat, use the bathroom, go back to sleep, he'd be up all night trading. But anyway, I said, I want $1,200 for this phone. But what I would do for you is give me $600 now. If you transfer, if I transfer, Transfer. If you go to the hole, if I go to the hole, if anything happens to where we're separated, where we got to leave away from each other, then you just give me the phone back. Give me the phone back. Simple as that. He said, OK, he agreed to it. I gave him the phone and that phone came with, I guess, like a line of protection. I ain't going to let nobody take it from you. You know what I'm saying? So. I had been fired. Hold on. Did I? Yeah, I, have, I was fired already. I had got fired from my job. I was without a job for a little minute. And the regional inspector people was going to be coming up there very soon. So they come get me. They sent a lieutenant down there to come get me from the dorm and ask me, can I come up here, clean the bathroom, clean out all the offices, uh, wax the floors, shine the floors, all that type of stuff. So I'm like, hey, yeah, I do. I just said that just because I wanted to get out of the dorm. I've been sitting in the damn dorm so long. And see, that's how they do you. They'll fire you, kick you out of position. And then when they other orderly did something stupid and got fired and they needed you, when they sit back and think about the characteristics. I don't know what Buddy was doing or whatever, but one thing about me, they know Bill ain't going to come up here and be messing with our officers, saying nothing crazy, getting in trouble. Bill ain't going to come up here and be trying to steal nothing out of our officers. So that's probably the reason they came and got me. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I go up there. I go doing my thing. When I'm leaving out, when I get done, bro, it's late, bro. When I get done doing my thing, I'm coming out. I see the one kitchen dude that's working. 
He coming like walking up this way. He got a pack out in his hand. He walking from the kitchen to bring me a pack out. I told y'all that's just a, a peanut butter sandwich, a bologna sandwich, either an apple or an orange, and a little carton of milk. That's what he feeds you when you like out here working. He throw me a pack out. He like, huh? They told me to bring you that. I'm like, appreciate it, bro. He like, uh, what the hell that boy Rick got going on? I'm like, shit, he down there cooling. He ain't up to nothing. He said, oh, no, he must have heard what they got going on down there. I'm like, what they got going on? He talking about shit, yeah, I've been talking too much. And he went to walking off. So instantly, I go to think it got something to do with my phone because why would he say what that boy Rick got going on? Then talking about I've been talking too much and walked off. The only thing me and Rick had going on was, you know, him with my phone or whatever. So I go to speed walking now. Trying to get to the gate, trying to hurry up, get back to the dorm. I get to the gate, the gate locked. I got to run back this way, wave to the security booth so they could pop the gate, let me through. Once they let me through, I kind of go to jogging. Get back to the dorm, looking, trying to see if it looked like anybody coming out on medical or anything, anybody property out there. Everything looks perfectly normal. When I get to the booth, I'm hitting the thing, trying to tell the girl to let me in. She in there taking a damn nap. I'm hitting the thing. She wake up. I'm looking at my door. My door is locked. They got a green light on. That means it's locked. I'm trying to figure out the hell my door locked for. I come in here. I got to tell her my name and stuff. She can sign me back in that I'm in the dorm. First thing I do, I shoot up the steps. But it was something about the dorm. It was something funny going on. You had the bench full. But the only time people filled up at the bench, it got to be something super good on or something going on down right now. And there's a lot of people want to get out the way and make it seem like they ain't got nothing to do with nothing. That's how it looked. I did not like the, the look of that because I knew, like, bro, hell no, nah, something ain't right with this. So, and it's just a lot of people was just a little too spaced out for my liking. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot of people, time of the essence. What up, though? It was a lot of people too spaced out for my liking. Um, um, it, it just didn't seem normal. It felt a little flaky. I shoot to my room. I go to the door. I look through the thing like this. Uh, Rick. Lying back on the bed, doing his hands like this. So I turn around, go back down into the booth. I don't even say nothing to him. I tell uh, the officer, I'm like, hey, pop my door. She pop my door. I go back upstairs. I pull the door up, and I knew it was something funny because he didn't even move off the bed. He was just lying there. I shoot through the room. I'm like, what the hell you got going on? He look up at me talking about, man, man, Buka, man, Buka, Buka, Buka what? Man, Buka took the damn phone. Man, I turned straight around, shot back out the room, shot back downstairs. Now it's a few of my guys standing at me. What's up, bro? You straight? You straight? I ain't even saying nothing. It's a dude named Buka in the dorm. Um, Buka is the same dude. It was Buka and his crew that uh, that uh, robbed Rick multiple times a long time ago before. Now I feel like you just tried me because why the hell you just tried that when I wasn't in the dawn? That's number one. And number two, bro, that's my phone. And number three, shit, I, I, I ain't, I should have asked him how, how did he do it, where he went to do it or whatever. Now I went straight down there to the room. Yo, I say, see, Bill. He say, come here, bro. Now I pulled it up and there's about four of them in there. So, you know, I see out my peripheral, a few of my guys walking the way. They walking slow, though. They ain't walking like try to make it seem like nothing a threat or whatever. I pull the door up and I step in. I say, hey, Buka, come on with my phone, bro. He said, yo, what? I said, my phone. Come on with that phone, bro. He like, what you mean? I ain't got your phone. I'm like, bro, that phone you took from Rick, that's not Rick's phone. That's my phone, bro. Come on with that, bro. He was like, nah, bro, look, man. Man, bro, owe me 1200 I I've been giving him this. I know for a fact Buka is lying. I know this for a fact. This is a tall, skinny, black ass, black Twizzler looking mother. Real tall, skinny, hair just be twisted up in a mess. I'm like, bro, listen, I don't even go into that part with him. Cause what, what do he owe you $1,200 for, Buka? Buka, you don't be having nothing. How the hell somebody, <coughs> how the hell somebody owe you $1,200? That's just like a homeless man coming up to one of y'all saying, CB owe me $1,200. For what? What, what, what the hell you had that he got from you work $1,200? So I didn't even go into none of that. I was just like, hey, bro, listen, I don't know what y'all got going on. That ain't got nothing to do with me. Bro, you came and took my phone from that man. I'm not going for that, Buka. Come on with my phone, bro. So he went in the box, pulling it out. He pulled it out. He was like, shit, bro, I'm saying the food 
That was your food too. I see the big ass bag of food on the floor. I know that's Rick food. I didn't even, I was like, bro, come on with that phone, bro. Feel me? Cause Rick, Rick really pissing me off at this point, bro. So I grab the uh phone from stick it in my pocket, shoot back upstairs. I go up there and cuss Rick clean. <coughs> I just cussed him out just for being stupid, bro. Cause I know he still be doing stuff, still be flexing and stuff. Now, this is another part that I left out <coughs> that I had told Rick before. We were still smoking every day. Even though I wasn't buying it, he was buying it because he the one that had the free bands like that. And I would smoke a lot of times at lockdown, early in the morning before anybody wake up, when the dorm just relaxed and ain't nobody doing nothing. Rick want to go outside in the day room and be smoking. And I told him, like, bro, stop doing that. You got so many people in this dorm that want to smoke so bad, but they can't afford it. And here you are, and I ain't trying to be funny or nothing, but you know how the Georgia prison is. Bro, you're you. Ain't got no ties to nothing. You cannot just be out there in them folks' face just smoking every day, bro. It's going to make niggas feel some type of way. And he, he was doing that anyway. I shoot back up down cussing Rick out. So I give him the phone. told him, put it up. You don't even need to use it right now. Just put it up. I uh get my stuff together because I've been up there working. I'm trying to hurry up for they lockdown. Go take me a shower or whatever. Bro, I come out the shower. Tell me why I don't see Rick Matt gone. I look in the box, his property gone, but I look down there, I see some shoes. So the very first thing I do, I hurry up, look in the spot real quick to make sure he ain't tried to take my phone and work no one. The phone was still there. So I put the spot back up. I go to get myself together now. Out the shower. Put my Vaseline on, you feel me? Doing whatever it is I need to do. Rick come walking through the door. He like, yeah, see Bill, bro, I'm a gone. I'ma just go on relocate, bro. I found me a better, uh, a better proposition. I'm like, oh, okay, shit, that's fine. I'm like, where the hell you going? He said, uh, man, I, uh, I'm going on down here to old Buka's room. I said, you going to who? He said, I'm going to old Buka's room, man. I was talking to Buka, man, and uh, bro next door is gonna do a good deal with us. On the phone, he gonna sell us a phone for a real good deal. And man, Buka's gonna, you know, the deal me and you worked out, me and Buka gonna do something a little cheaper than that. I said, bro, pull that door up, bro. He pulled the door up. I said, listen to me, bro. As stupid as you acting right now, bro, I really should just let you go out bad. I say, bro, if you don't use common sense, bro, if you don't use common sense, since that man ain't finna do nothing for you. That man is finna try to hurt you down, bad you or something like that. That's common sense, bro. Why the hell would you move in a room with somebody like that? You sound like a damn fool, bro. He was, I know what you're saying, CBL, bro, but it ain't nothing like that, bro. I'm telling you, it ain't nothing like that, bro. Buka's really a good dude, bro. He just be going through stuff, man. You know, his mom is sick. Once he went to saying all that, I said, go ahead, bro. Go on, on. Go on, go on, on, bro. Go on, on. And I told him, and I said, and Buka's roommate ain't coming up here. So y'all better work something out, too, and find him a room. Go on, on. Get up out of here, bro. So he left out my room. He left out my room. Y'all can see me and hear me. He left out my room and uh uh bro I don't I don't think I don't think a full 24 hours went by. A full 24 hours ain't go by. That very next day, um Rick was standing at the door with a fat ass black eye. He done bought a phone from next door, thinking buddy and them finna uh Work something out with him and offer him for some protection or whatever. Case. So I purposely go walking down there with my cup. I'm finna go to the hot water thing. I go over there to the hot water thing. He gonna come over there to me talking about, hey, CB, man, what you'll charge me, bro, to move me back up there and let's just finish, you know, finish working out what we got going on. Right when he's saying that, Buka come walking straight up. Buka like, well, y'all have finna go on that dope. You're not standing there down with me. He like, I'm saying, CB, what you, what you, what you trying to work something with him or something? I looked at Buka, I looked at him, I said, hey, bro, what y'all got going on ain't got nothing to do with me. I got my water and I went back upstairs. They put uh, Rick on the door, bro. And it's just like this. I don't know, bro. I just hate when people be so naive and be so damn slow like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? When I'm showing you, you see 
How the hell you gonna do me some harm two, three times and then I let you talk me into, bro, my mama been sick. That's why I did that. Hey, I don't give a damn what your reason is. You did it, nigga. But that's why I say, bro, stay out of that, bro, because you think you, you could thank you hard, thank you, gangster, thank you doing this, this, and that on the street. But your ass go to that prison. Bricks 220. I caught another live peace fees and family. Appreciate that, bro. Thanks for the support. Um, get ready. Appreciate the content, B. Appreciate that family. Thanks for the support. Nikki, appreciate that family. Thanks for the support. Ray Green, appreciate that family. Thanks for the support. Um, Gazelle Brown finally caught alive. I always watch it. Get ready for work. Appreciate that family. Yeah, man. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. It's your boy, Bill.